The top line signatory to the Hunter Biden laptop disinformation letter, the guy who lied to all of us, James Clapper, seen here, is very upset he's being called a liar. He doesn't like that at all, even though he lied. That's my humble opinion on it. You can be the judge. But remember him? He was the first person to sign the document. The Hunter Biden letter, the same one that Politico posted on their website where they said the following. They said that the Hunter Biden laptop story, remember that one that popped out in October right before the election? They said it's Russian disinfo. This is their headline. Hunter Biden story is Russian disinfo, dozens of former Intel officials say. Now, to be fair, they never actually did say that. They said it has all the hallmarks of Russian disinfo. And so Politico took that and sort of embellished it a little bit. But the first person to sign this document was right here. Jim Clapper, James Clapper, former director of national intelligence, former undersecretary of defense for intelligence, geospatial intelligence agency, director of the DIA, the defense intelligence agency. All right. Absolutely involved, uh, ear, you know, uh, top to bottom with all of the intelligence agencies. And he is very upset that people are now calling him a liar for lying to all of us. The Washington Post concocted this article for us. They give us a, a briefing on the Hunter Biden laptop and claims of Russian disinfo. This guy, Glenn Kessler, calls himself the fact checker, whatever that means. And he writes the following. Now we're going to fast forward through most of this. We know that we followed a lot of this history. We talked all about the lies saying Adam Schiff and others were calling this Russian misinformation and disinformation. But Politico actually published the story. And now we've got a bunch of letters being sent out to all of the 50 signers on the letter. They all want answers, right? Why did you guys sign this letter if it was blatantly false? You said it was Russian disinformation. It wasn't. It was true. So what happened? So the fact checker here on the Washington Post reached out to 12 people who got Jim Jordan's letters. And we went through those letters previously. Most of them did not respond to these letters at all. But we learned that the, the letter was organized by this person called Michael J. Morrill, former deputy director of the CIA. And it was written and edited by a number of senior intelligence officials who had served in many different administrations. They all signed it. He was long considered a top candidate for CIA director. Did you get that? Morrill, the guy who organized the letter, was considered a top candidate for the CIA director. So it's very convenient that he wrote a letter that very much helped Joe Biden win the presidency so that he could have the possibility of being appointed to the CIA director, right? See how corrupt all of this is? So when this fact checker, checker reached out to people, we got some answers back. James Clapper responded. He said there was a message distortion. He doesn't like what Politico said. He said, all we were doing, says James, all we were doing was raising a yellow flag that this could, this could be Russian disinformation. He says Politico deliberately distorted what we said. It was clear in paragraph five, he says. He said he was unaware of how Biden described the letter during the debate. And of course, Biden said, no, no, no. What Trump said about the laptop is all fake because 50 so-called intelligence idiots signed this letter that he got to use as a pretext for his little fictional narrative. He could have just asked his son, hey, Hunter, crackhead, are you available? Are, is this your laptop? Oh, it is? That's a problem, right? And he could have been honest with all of us, but he didn't do that. So he instead relied on the letter that was totally fraudulent. So no one who has spent time in Washington should be surprised that journalists will take stuff out of context, said somebody else, another signer. And so the list goes on and on. Politico says the article fairly reported on and summarized the letter, and I agree with them. I agree with them. I think the letter does essentially say that without saying it. And so as you saw, we have James Clapper, who is very big mad. He says, all you have to do is look at paragraph five, and paragraph five will show you everything you need to know. And so we are going to look at paragraph five because it is sort of on his side. But his statement isn't. Paragraph five supports what he says, but his 2020 statement doesn't. And we're gonna get there in one quick minute, right after we talk about being ultra healthy with fieldofgreens.com. Because of course, as we all know, it would be nice to lose some of those leftover pandemic pounds, some of the holiday pounds or Super Bowl pounds, but we're all sick of those weight loss ads and fad diet pills, all that stuff. We've all been there, we've all done that. And we know they don't work. But you know what does? 
eating five healthy servings of fruits and vegetables every day like I do. You do that and you imagine the weight falls right off. You feel healthy and vibrant. But vegetables, not a fan. Fruit, who's got time for that every day? It's a lot of work. Instead, we can talk about Field of Greens. It is a science-backed formula of specific fruits and vegetables that you're not going to find in any other product. Proper nutrition reboots your metabolism so you burn calories the faster way and lose health weight a healthier way. Field of Greens is the only brand backed by a better health promise. You're going to look healthier, feel healthier, but the best proof is going to come at your next doctor's checkup when your doctor looks at you and says, my goodness, you've lost weight, whatever you're doing, keep it up. And so it's very easy. Let's get you started. Go over to fieldofgreens.com. Don't forget to use code Robert to save 15% off your first purchase today. Fieldofgreens.com. You're going to feel great, vibrant, energized. It tastes good going down. It's got all sorts of amazing stuff in here, stuff that you probably don't eat every day. It's got an antioxidant blend. It's got a metabolic blend. It's got an organic greens blend. It's got it all in there. And it is actually delicious going down. So check it out at fieldofgreens.com. And don't forget to use code Robert. All right. So paragraph five, Clapper says, all you got to do is look at paragraph five in the letter and you'll see that everything here is just above board. And remember the letter. This is what it was saying back on October 19th. We're all individuals who dedicate our lives to national security, but we're dumb and we can't understand the truth. Blah, 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 blah. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Paragraph five. He says this exonerates him. He says, we want to emphasize, says James, that we do not know, we do not know if the emails that were provided to the New York Post by Giuliani are genuine or not, and that we do not have evidence of Russian involvement. Of course you don't. Just that our experience makes us deeply suspicious that the Russian government played a significant role in this case. All right. So he says that excuses him. Do you buy that? a significant role in this case. They don't have any evidence of anything, he admits. So this is one of the most sneakiest statements that you could basically ever imagine, right? He's saying that we don't have any evidence of this, but our experience says it's them anyways. And he also goes through in the first four paragraphs talking about Russia, 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 my Russia, and that this is their entire life's work senior positions. And look at all these people, man, all of these intelligence, blah, 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 former intelligence, 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 all idiots. I mean, like literally they were all dead wrong. Every person who signed this letter was dead wrong. So they have no intelligence. Apparently all of their work was for not because they couldn't even tease out the reality about a laptop that we were able to tease out with zero resources relative to what they have. Pretty amazing. So James Clapper signed this right here. So in my reading of this, it sounds like I think Politico nailed this. They got it right. They are saying, even under paragraph five, reading it in a light most favorable to him, he is splicing two opposing statements together and they're logically inconsistent. So that's why he can't use that as an escape hatch, even though he wrote it to be an escape hatch. So that's what he said in the letter, but he also made a statement about this back in 2020. So now he says, you're wrong. We're all wrong for saying he's an idiot or a liar. It's got to be one of the two. He couldn't see reality or he was dishonest about the reality that he saw. He says, no, 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 no. I wrote in the letter. I said what I said and therefore I'm exonerated. But he was also saying stuff like this on the media on recorded video. Obama. So director, a bunch of questions from this. Let me just start with this. How much does the source matter, right? So you hear the story of this laptop. We don't know a lot. We do know that the, the way that this information is getting out is through Steve Bannon and Rudy Giuliani. How much uh, do Who the, are the, just does the, the worst, source right? matter here? Well, the source matters a lot, and, uh, and the timing matters a, a lot, I think. And to me, this is uh, just classic uh, textbook uh, Soviet-Russian uh, tradecraft at work. This is, he said, this is Russian trade craft at work. This case is Russian trade craft at work. Uh, the Russians have analyzed the target. They understand that the president and his enablers uh, crave uh, dirt on Vice President Biden, whether it's real or contrived, that doesn't matter to them. And so all of a sudden, two, two and a half weeks before the election, uh, this laptop appears somehow. Uh, without, what do you mean, how? And, uh, emails on it without any metadata. It's not true. We saw it all. Uh, it just, it's all very curious, but the, so here you have, 
It is curious. Uh, a willing Canada. target, and the Russians who are very sophisticated about how to exploit a, a, a willing target. And uh, to me, that's what's at work here. And that's what's at work here, right? The Russians are exploiting a target. That's what's at work here. So he is openly, this is kind of freaky, isn't it? This is what they were doing on CNN in 2020. This is, this is what the news was for all of us. Former ex-intelligence, whatever. Openly saying this to all of America in the months right up before an election, weeks before an election. Totally erroneous. Absolute disinformation, as far as we could tell. A liar. And he was openly sharing all of this on CNN. And so, you know, when you, you try to figure out the specifics of, you know, whether that meeting email, for example, is real in the midst of this, um, do you think stuff like that could just have been planted in there and be completely fake? I do. Yeah. I think the, uh, totally. the emails could be con uh, could be contrived, particularly since, as I understand it from what I've read, yeah. uh, they appear uh, without any metadata. That is, you know, from, to, and, and any technical data uh, at least immediately evident. Now, okay, and the FBI also, by the way, they could have come out and clarified all this stuff. They were all former, so they had that as, a, as, as an escape hatch. But the FBI, I think, had the laptop as late as December 2019. So they could have corroborated this as well. Uh, uh, if this computer is in the hands of the uh, FBI, they have obviously there excellent, uh, sophisticated uh, technical and forensic uh, analytic capabilities. And I think they'll be able to sort it out whether this is genuine or not. But yeah, but they knew the FBI wasn't going to comment on it. So they knew they had room, right? They had a buffer. They could say whatever they wanted because they knew the FBI was not going to come and corroborate it one way or the other. The FBI was never going to come out and say, yeah, it's true or no, it's not. Because that's not what they do. They don't comment on that stuff unless there's a charge being filed. It's just standard procedure. He knows that. All of those 50 so-called intelligence idiots also knew that. That's why they signed on to it because they, they knew there would be no repercussions. And now they're trying to have it both ways. They were, t they were in aggregate saying this was absolute Russian disinformation. And now they're saying that it's not. It's very dishonest. It's very reprehensible. And James Clapper and the rest of them should be ashamed of themselves for lying to us openly and nakedly like they did. So James Comer is also very upset about this. He was on with Fox News and he is in possession of a lot of new documents. And he has been leading the, the charge against the investigation into Hunter Biden. Of course, he was on with Fox Business. And so we'll listen to him explain his reaction to that clip that we just watched, basically. Let's see where he starts for us. Post, NBC have since authenticated information on the Hunter Biden laptop. It's always revealing the Biden family was basically selling access via Joe Biden's government job. This is alleged corruption. What was your response? What's your reaction to what you just heard? Well, if if Clapper or those other 50 intelligence officials want to blame someone, if they want to throw someone under the bus, they should throw Joe Biden under the bus. Because remember, in that presidential debate, when Donald Trump uh, phrased the term the laptop from hell, Joe Biden flatly denied that, said it wasn't true. He implied it was Russian disinformation. Yeah. So uh, these Could characters uh, that worked for the for the intelligence community all went along with Joe Biden's narrative. So uh, if they're really sincere about trying to find someone to blame, they should blame Joe Biden. And this is something the media, remember when I had the press conference in November after the Republicans won the midterm elections to formally announce that we were going to investigate the Biden family for influence peddling, all those media outlets uh, attacked the Republicans for having the audacity to investigate Joe Biden. Biden and even the Associated Press and Bloomberg as, as early as November uh, of just a few months ago were saying that the laptop was Russian disinformation and that it was a conspiracy theory. Right. Now everyone knows. CBS did the forensic audit. The Twitter executives testified in our committee last week. There's no question the, the, the laptop is authentic and there is very damaging evidence. Uh, within that hard drive that would implicate not just the Biden family, but also Joe Biden in influence peddling with our adversaries, including communist China. So let's stay. Yeah, and in including what we just read through with James Biden and other deals in, in other places around the world. So they go through some of the other emails and let's see what else 
Comer has. Convince people that because he was Joe Biden's son, he could help them navigate the bureaucracy of the federal government. So obviously, the more people that Hunter Biden could prove to communist China that he had close connections with, the more money his family would rake in. And this is another example of how Joe Biden uh, or Hunter Biden, through uh, Joe Biden's network, sold himself uh, to our adversaries in, in China, Russia, and Ukraine. So so this is proof that this family w was was knee-deep in with communist yeah. China and trying to ha sell access and, to the federal government. And, Congressman, it's also about Obama, Obama White House officials. The email suggests Max Balk has helped the Biden family set up meetings with Chinese officials in the U.S. Embassy in Beijing, right as Hunter was involved in the BHR Partners, that Beijing-backed private equity firm controlled by the Bank of China. I mean, they're selling, sending each other emails about all of this, about working with Max Baucus, getting his help in China. That's the important thing to know, Liz. And this is what gets lost in translation. The media, when they're constantly defending the Biden family for potential corruption, they'll say, well, that may have happened, but it happened when Joe Biden was a private citizen. That is not true. You will see in the laptop, the text messages and emails, yep. much of this happened while Joe Biden was vice president. The deal with Ukraine and Burisma, the deal with uh, getting set up with CEFC from, from China, the, the Chinese energy company, all of this happened because of Joe Biden's position as vice president and Hunter utilized many people within the Obama administration to be able to set himself up yeah. for a payday right after the, the president left office. He did, they were all collecting big chunks of money hand over fist. What does James Biden know about negotiating anything with the Saudis, for example? What does Hunter Biden know about energy supplies with Burisma or any of these other companies? It's absolutely insane, but they had a lot of money to be made and the Biden family got very rich off of it. Of course, we'll continue to cover. And by the way, I did order my, my Marco Polo report. It is in the mail. I have the tracking number. I'm waiting for it to get here any minute now. Those are available if you want to see what some of the malfeasance that Comer is talking about. You can grab a copy of the laptop report for free at marcopolousa.org. Our friend Garrett Ziegler over there, they do great work. And... You can also buy a hard copy because it is a nice coffee table book and it's a nice memento of history of the disgustingness of this family. And of course, we'll continue to cover it. Thank you for subscribing wherever it is you're watching this and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.